Welcome. We are now in episode four. How about we build some furniture today, which I think most people are really looking forward to. Um, so remember, we've got two collections now. We've got whatever's in the scene, and we can hide that by pressing this icon because we don't really need it anymore. We've got the building blocks for all the walls and windows, and let's make a new collection by right-clicking in the scene collection here. And uh, what happened? Right-click, new collection, there we go. And we'll call it furniture. Furni I cannot spell. Furniture, there we go. Okay, and make sure that's the active one by just clicking it. So if we ever add anything, just remember it goes straight into the furniture itself. By the way, the monkey's name is Suzanne. I didn't do that. That is by Blender. Um, before we begin, if you are following the same sort of template that I am, I've realized that even though this is the actual layout that's given by, uh, well, by the HDB people, I don't really like having this wall separating my kitchen from the living room. So let's destroy that wall, shall we? So we'll select the kitchen, tap to go into edit mode, two to select edges, and we'll select just this one over here, and tap G twice to slide it, and we'll slide it to this wall over here, press three to go to face select, select this wall, press X, delete faces. There you go, we've got way more space now. Okay, great. Um, when you start making furniture, you're probably going to find it's a bit difficult using your mouse to sort of scroll in and twist and turn, and it's very hard to get the right angle. So a shortcut that we can use for this, which might be familiar to some people, is holding down shift and the tilde icon, which is sort of the that little common thing that's next to the number one on most keyboards. If it doesn't work, you can also go down to view, navigation, and select walk navigation. What happens now is when you move your mouse, you change the view. And if you've ever played a first person game in, well, any PC, it's W and S to move um, forwards and back, A and D to strafe left and right, Q and E moves you up and down. If you find you're moving a bit slow, you can hold on shift and it moves a bit faster. So I find this a bit easier sometimes because it lets me sort of move through the view and sort of um, find the best location for things. When you move in, everything is going to seem a bit cramped. It's only because the view in the viewport here is very different to what we see from our eyes. We have sort of a, a larger field of view. So maybe we can change that first. Let's press uh, in, go back to object mode. So press tab to object mode if you're in edit. I don't know why I was there. And to open up your usual menu, go to uh, view. And that's your focal length over here. If you're good with cameras, I'm not. I can't take any good pictures to save my life. You probably know what all these means. All I know is your typical eye point of view is maybe roughly 24-ish. So if you change that to 24, everything becomes a bit wider. And you, you sort of see more of the area as well. So if you go back to fly mode, it might be just a bit easier to look around. Woohoo, MOH is sending me something. That's fine. And what's next? Let me look at my notes. So we've done the walking, uh, the flying, and perhaps you can start building furniture now. So there's three ways we can do it. Um, let's look at the simplest way of doing it by sort of directly modeling things. Remember, we built everything here to scale. So when we model things, we should do it to scale as well. If really your, your main point of doing something like this is to get a general idea of what the layout is going to be like. Um, oops, let's open that. So say, for example, I want to model a TV. Let's look at uh, LG TV. Uh, actually, it doesn't have to be. Why am I doing LG? I want an OLED LG TV. I can't afford it, but you know, it's a dream. And we have the measurement over here. Ooh, it's a Samsung. Great. Okay, and you've got it here in inches and centimeters. And remember, Blender can sort of do the conversion for you. Okay, let's pretend we can afford a 65-inch QLED 4K TV. And you've probably noticed that whenever you bring in a new mesh into Blender, it is always brought in to wherever this um, little red and white circle is. That is sort of the origin of things. You can shift and right click anywhere and you move that around. And whenever you add a new object, you bring it into that area. So let's shift right click somewhere here on the wall because uh, I don't know, maybe you want your TV here or you can put it here, you know, whatever suits you, maybe. 
Maybe we'll put it here instead. Um, with this field of view, it is pretty wide. I'm just going to make it 30 instead for now. Okay, so we can um, shift A, mesh. Let's start with maybe a cube. So since we're doing direct modeling, let's select everything, control A, apply scale if you've not done that already. And with the cube selected, press N to open this menu, go to item, and we'll put in the dimensions. So we have got, this is okay. We've got, let's see, 145 centimeters on the uh, y-axis. So you can just put centimeters directly if you want it to do the conversion for you, or you know you can just multiply by 10. 83.1 here, so let's do 831 millimeters. And thickness, thickness. Uh, okay, yeah, sure, here, yeah, 4.1 centimeters. Uh, what was that on? The x-axis. So 4.1 centimeters. And there you go. You've got yourself a great Samsung TV. So this doesn't look fantastic. Let's do a bit more work for it. Um, press the forward slash key. It's where the question mark is. And you sort of isolate the view of this. Let's uh, look at it orthographically. So it's either front or left or right, depending on how you were modeling it. And let's start by actually adding some textures to things. Let's press Z and go to Material Preview. And this is what uh, the material is going to look like in the end. On the menu on the right over here, you'll probably see um, different options. And there's one here that's called Material Properties. Click that. If you've already messed with it before, you might see materials here. If you don't, that's fine. Don't worry. Click New. There you go. You've added a new material. You can change the base color here to be any color you want it to be. It's a TV, so usually black. Let's keep it to black. And there are lots of options you can play around with here. Um, let's ignore most of it. The few things you're probably going to want to use is metallic. So everything here goes on the scale of 0 to 1. So 0 is not metallic at all. 1 is it has the properties of metal, which you wouldn't really see here anyway because we don't really have much light. Specular is how shiny something is. So zero, not shiny. One, very shiny. You can see the lights over there. And uh, roughness. So a roughness of zero is like glass. Roughness of one means it's not reflecting anything. Um, specularity and sort of roughness is think something that people can get confused by. So think about it this way. If you look at a coin, a coin is very shiny, but you can't really see your reflection in it. So it is highly specular. Uh, but also very rough. Uh, that's, that's a quick way to look at it. So a TV, what's the TV usually like? Well, the f it doesn't have to be exact. This is, you know, uh, it's usually slightly shiny, the plastic, but yeah, let's do it that way. And, you know, if I go back here, if all you want really is to block out what the furnitures look like, then you don't need to add any detail. That's fine. You know, you can just leave it like this and then move it up, move it down. If you want to mount your TV, we can build more furnitures later. Or if you want it to look a bit more like a TV, let's go back to the isolation view. If you hit from the front here and go into tap mode, we will make a screen for it. So in edit mode, if you press I to insert, it creates, uh, we can't see it Let's because we're selecting everything. So press 3, just select the front view here, the, well, the front face. Press I to insert and you see you create a new sort of plane that's right in front over here. So uh, I think new TVs, tend to have very small bezels, well, thin bezels. We'll keep it over here. And what we want to do is we add a new material to where the screen is. Um, this is going to seem a bit peculiar at the start. So say, for example, we've already got everything here is one object, right? If you go out of edit mode, it's still the same object. So if I try to add a new material to this, so material one, let's call this uh, TV. You're going to have loads of materials later on, so <laughs> label it at the start. We'll press the plus icon to add a new material. New. And, you know, let's make it slightly blue. And if you look at it, you're going to see nothing changes. Um, so what happens is, with if you've selected out of it, select your screen again. Go back to the blue material, which we will call screen. And then click assign. So what you're telling Blender is, anything that I've selected here, I want you to assign a screen to it, something like that, right? Uh, so let's go back to the screen. So for the screen material itself, usually let's say very shiny, very reflective. And now if you go back 
to you remove the isolation view by pressing the forward slash key. There you go. You've got a TV over there. It doesn't really look um, like a very detailed TV, but if all you're doing is looking for how to arrange furniture, it doesn't really matter, does it? Okay, so let's leave the TV there for now. Um, let's go to method two of making your own furniture. So the first one, that was the first one, it was modeling. Let's perhaps not have our TV floating in the air. So press G, press X, and then we'll snap it to the wall. If you're very peculiar, you can also move it, uh, sorry, you could move it out a bit and make like mounting brackets and things, but uh, we don't really need that detail for now. Um, second thing, let's make a fridge. And how can we do this? So let's say maybe our fridge is going to be somewhere here. Shift right click. Whoa, let's zoom around. Shift A, mesh cube. And so like the TV, first thing is we need a measurement for it. Let's open this up. And let's, uh, you know, let's go for LG fridge measurements because I've looked for it before. I know it's there. And there's two things you want here. You uh, just, you know, choose whichever fridge you want. It doesn't have to be LG, just, and uh, most online brands anyway, they're going to have measurements. So choose the fridge you want, go to specs and find the measurements. So for this technique, the important thing is you want a picture of the object that you're trying to make. And, and I'll show you why very soon. So let's get the measurements in. 9121790, uh, press N. Oh dear, I've not labeled a TV. Uh -huh. And I keep saying labeling is important. All right, let's label this fridge. Great. <clears throat> Select this. What did I say? Was it 912 1790? 1790 is the height. And the width is 7. Three eight seven three eight. Ta da! Okay, great. So let's snap this to the floor. Let's move it out. Um, let's bring this. Yeah, you know what? If you want it here, that's fine. If you've modeled it this way, you can either switch to X and Y or press R to rotate Z to lock on the Z axis. Nine zero for nine degrees. There you go. And let's bring it to the back here. So forward slash. Let's isolate this. Um, if say for example you wanted to go down through that block method again where you you just want like simple colors to represent the things that you want you can always select so select the fridge select material properties here and you can um, click this down arrow here browse material so since you've made that little sort of black shiny thing for the TV already if you really wanted to you could select that and leave it here and, you know there you go so now you've got your fridge you can start adding all the different furnitures with the measurements and it doesn't really matter what it looks like because all you want is the placement if you want to do that, that's fine. Leave it at that. But let's say we want it to actually look like a fridge. And this is where we will introduce opening up new windows. So if you move up to any corner, you'll see that this sort of changes to a reticle. Left click and drag. And hey, lo and behold, you've got a new window over here. Um, actually, really, in Blender, you can, you can sort of open up as many windows as you want and uh, I, I don't see why you'd want too many. So if you've accidentally done that, you've opened up more than one, the way you close it is move to the border of where the two different windows are until you see this double headed arrow, right click, join areas, and then choose where, you, you know, which side you want overlapping. So you want the right to go over the left, um, find the left arrow, click it, join areas, click. Great. So in our window over here, go up here to what looks like the uh, hashtag icon, click that and go to UV editor. In our main window, let's go back to our front view, go to material, add a new material and we'll call it fridge. So this time for the base color, instead of changing the color here, we're going to click the little um, circle next to it and choose image texture. So uh, this might turn black, for some of you it might turn pink, don't worry. You're telling Blender, I want to use an image instead. So let's, oh, you know what? We've not actually downloaded the image. So this is why you need an image. So you can right click, save image as. Um, sometimes this is annoying because Google sort of tries to code it as a WebP, W-E-B-P, WebP file instead of an image file. And not all programs read it. So if you want, you can download this, bring it into paint and save it as an image. Um, if you have windows, you might have tools to snip whatever, whatever's on the screen. 
um, I've enabled the shortcut to sort of open the snipping tools whenever I click my print screen. So let's click print screen, choose this. I just want the image of the fridge. There we go. So let's save that and download. Sure, let's call it fridge, save. And back to Blender. Okay, so we've told Blender I want to use an image texture instead. Uh, you'll see this option over here. Let's open, find your fridge and open it up. And hey, there you go. That's a horrible fridge. So we need to actually do some work for it. Here in your UV editor, um, since you've already opened the image for the fridge, you don't have to go to open again. It should be listed down here. There you go, fridge. You can see why um, if you don't label things at some point, you've got loads of furniture, everything's just going to be a long line of things that you can't sort of, you, you don't really know what it is because the image is quite small. So label it. Now in your main view over here, um, select the fridge, tap to go into edit mode. And you'll see this. Um, this is known as UV unwrapping. And it's a fairly complex um, topic that if you're going into actual 3D modeling, which you're doing for making games or um, I don't know, other things really, it's something you, you, you're really going to need to know about. We don't care about any of that. We're going to use the laziest, quickest way we can to achieve the outcome that we want. So ignore all that. Make sure you're in the front view and make sure that this fridge is facing the front as well. Now with everything selected, in edit mode, press U, project from view. So what you're telling Blender is, based on where we're looking here, I want you to project that sort of outline over in the image here. And if you manipulate the image here, it changes what it looks like here. That sounds confusing, so let's see what I mean. So this is the fridge that you created. So if I select everything here, the controls are the same. Let's press S to scale. And as we scale it up, press G to move you can see that our fridge is starting to look like a fridge. So um, you can just select vertices and sort of, you know, align them. It doesn't have to be perfect, you know, as long as you get a general idea. Yeah, that's wrong. There you go. So that's a fridge. It might look um, a bit weird when you start moving around because you'll see like, oh, this part's white, this part's a bit stretched. Yeah, you've got another fridge in the back. What's going on? Uh, don't worry about it. So. Select your image again, press tab. Any sort of area that looks weird, just select select that, you know, you project from view and, you know, select everything here, bring it down to an area that's black. Look, that's salt. This is white, that's weird, what's happening? That's you project from view, bring it to a black area. Fine, great. Select everything, make it small, bring it here. You, you know what, let's do it. Let's make our fridge look different. Let's put it here instead. Give it some character, give it a history. Look at that, now it looks like we've got an iPad stuck in the back of our fridge. Well, you, you get the idea. Um, now that you've selected image texture, you know, some of the material properties can still be changed. So your fridge is probably not gonna be, it might be metallic. It's not gonna be super shiny. So let's remove the specularity, let's increase the roughness. And there you go. You've got a fridge and it's in the right measurement as well. So this is one of the best parts about working in a, something like Blender. Let's control A, apply the scale. And it, this, this is just for fun. You know, if you, if you want it to look a bit more like a fridge, you know, you don't want it to look like a boring cube. Well, let's maybe add um, a few edges to it. So we've learned how to do this. If you have, so tap, go to edit mode, control R to select this edge loop thing. Click once and move it down here. Let's do it again, move it down here. This is just for fun. Let's select this face. E to extrude it out. I to inset it in a bit. E again, let's extrude it in. Hey, look at that. It looks like a three-dimensional fridge with sort of like, you know, different areas as well. You can be as detailed as you want. So forward slash and there you go. You've got a fridge. Um, let's try the same thing again with a washing machine. Let's say washing machine with measurements. Uh, does this have measurements? Yeah, great. Okay, let's, let's use this. So let's do the same thing. Washing machine, where's that going to go? Maybe around here. So uh, that was shift right click. Let's put the cursor there, mesh. Q 
cube. All right, so for the cube, it's 84.5, 59.55, centimeters. I can't remember what I said, 59.55. It's hard to talk and remember things at the same time. And 54.5. Wait a minute, something's wrong. Oh, haha, <laughs> it's because I did it in millimeters. There we go. It's the thinnest washing machine ever. Okay, let's bring it to the floor. Let's bring it out. Forward slash, let's isolate this. Now, um, you might have a situation like this where you don't actually have a front-facing picture, which makes things a bit easier. You don't have it, that's fine. Let's try and save the image. It's a JPEG, great. So, washing machine. So, same steps. Let's go back to Blender. Select your washing machine. Put a new material. Let's label it washing machine. Base color, select the circle next to it. We'll select image texture. Open. Uh, find the texture that you've downloaded, washing machine, in your UV editor. Select this little icon here, select washing machine. And so the easiest way to do this is just try and line up its looks over here. Uh, do I have the measurements right? 54, 5, 5, 9, 5, 8, 4, 5, yep. Yeah. So try and line it up as best as you can. doesn't have to be perfect. Tap to edit mode, U. So uh, project from view. Let's just select everything. It's going to look a bit weird. That's fine. So let's just try and arrange the dots or the vertices that make up the front of the washing machine. Look at that. So the front looks great. Let's select the side. Let's align this. Great. Let's select the top. Let's align this. Great. Look at that. You've got a washing machine. And again, if you're very uh, particular, you can always do every side, even sides that you probably won't see. And, ooh, that's weird. That's fine, you know, be as particular as you need to be. Great, um, you know what, just for fun, let's make this look a bit more accurate. So ooh, this is warped weirdly. That's fine. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Did we do this? Let's try and align this a bit more it's because this is all the way out. There, it looks better. Um, so let's introduce a new tool. So go back to your main view over here. You can always minimize this if you need to. If you, in edit mode, if you tap K, you open up the knife tool. And so just left click, left click, make an outline of the circle. You really do not have to do this at all. It's just, I'm just showing you options if you want to. Is that a perfect circle? No, it's horrible, that's fine. Three to select face mode, just select the <laughs> that ugly circle that you made. E to extrude, I to inset, let's make a smaller circle. Ooh, that is ugly. E to extrude it to the back. You know what? It's ugly, but it's fine. It's mine. And there you go. You've got a washing machine as well. Some people get um, washer dryer, so you can shift D to duplicate, put it there, or you know, you might want it stacked. That's fine as well. Hey, look at that. You've got a washer dryer combo. It's not, it's not perfectly stacked. Watch out for your kids. So we've got a fridge, we've got a washing machine, we've got a dryer. I'm not gonna make everything, but let's look at the third way to make something. Um, so remember, you can just directly model like the TV, add very simple textures to it. So you've got a measurement. You can use your project from view to basically um, fake it and make the uh, objects with the right measurements and it just looks good enough for a layout like this. Let's close this. So right click, join area, merge it. The last way is to just download 3D models. So someone has already done all the hard work, they've done the modeling, they've done the scaling and everything, and you can just get it from there. There are three places you could, well, there are more than three places, but three places you could get it from is, I'll do it here, it's cgtrader.com. You've got Turbo Squid. And the last one is Paul Lantis. It, these are the ones that I've used. Um, so say for example, CG Trader, you want furnitures, right? So let's go for furnitures. Um, people post their models here, but not everything's for free because you know you put in the hard work, you want to get paid for it as well, and that's fair. But some people do put it up for free. So you know, search for what you want, select the free option, and there you go, see, everything here is free. Be careful when you're choosing, because if you look at something like this, 
you'll see it's not actually just the bed. They're giving you the entire room itself. It might be what you want, it might not be. It's If it's not, it's fine. So CG Trader, Turbo Squid's the same thing, you know, look for the models. Um, Polantis is interesting. So if you go to polantis.com slash IKEA, I just tried looking for this yesterday. There are loads of people who've actually modeled and scaled IKEA products. And um, I think sometimes if you don't really know what you want, and we know, let's be honest, lots of us shop at IKEA because it is cheap, not because it's particularly durable. So let's try and download something from, yeah, let's download an IKEA object like this, for example, right? So let's select this. Uh, for all these different websites, you do need to register for an account, but it's free. Don't worry about that. And we can download the project. Before we download, you need to know what sort of, um, well, file types Blender will, Blender will accept. So rather than giving you a whole list that it's easy to forget, if you ever forget, open up Blender, go to File, Import, and you'll see the different file types here. The sort of um, 3D models you'll probably see fairly often is this FBX or this .obj. Okay, so let's say for example, we want this, right? It's from Ikea. Uh, we think we're gonna get something like this for our house. Let's download the object. You'll see a whole load of options you can choose from here. Uh, let's select OBJ, cause we said that works. Download. All right, let's wait for that to download. Great. So let's download it. Let's uh, extract everything. And where do we, yeah, downloads folder, that's fine. Select. Extract. Great. So back to Blender. Let's go to File, Import. Uh, it was OBJ, so OBJ. Look for your folder. It's usually the one with the little cube there. It's the one with the OBJ. This is the material that's linked to it. You don't need to import that. If you import this, it brings in the material as well. So double click this and be prepared to be shocked. Great. Look at that, we have the world's biggest furniture. So this is an issue you might sometimes find when you're downloading 3D objects. And what happens is, even though everything was built to scale, when you try and bring 3D objects in from different programs, or someone might have made this in a different program, um, they don't really talk to each other very well. So even though it's built to scale, like in, say for example, centimeters, Blender looks at it and it sees units. And you know, it'll look at this and say, aha, instead of 10 centimeters, it sees 10 blender units, whatever that scale may be. So that's a bit annoying. And the good thing though, is that because it's just a matter of scale, it's usually just an issue of trying to narrow it down to in magnitudes of 10. Uh, what do I mean by that? So this looks huge. Let's try and scale it down. Instead of pressing S and trying to, you know, approximate and guess what the scale is. You know, someone's already done the hard work. Let's not do it. Let's not duplicate that. Press scale and scale it down um, in magnitudes of 10. So uh, what do I mean? So press S to scale 0 0.1, right? Oh, that's still too big. So if that doesn't work, you know, S to scale then 0 0.01. If that doesn't work, then S to scale 0 0.001. There are other ways to do this, but this is sort of the easiest one to follow. Um, let's try S to scale 0 0.01. Look, there, everything is in the right scale. And everything is pink. So an issue is sometimes the material doesn't come over. If that's an issue, that's fine. We don't really need it to look woody. Let's just, um, you know what, let's just make our own material for it. Uh, let's press new, let's make it brownish there you go and now you can move it around and you have a properly scaled table you've got chairs and everything works uh, sometimes when you download objects from <coughs> sorry from different places each one of these things are downloaded as a separate object so instead of something like this where it's just a single table everything has its own sort of um, nomenclature over here and if that happens, it can be a bit annoying. So what you could do is, I'll demonstrate with this in the TV. You select the entire object itself and you press Control J and you see this is now one item. So if I select TV and try and move it around, it's just one item. Okay, back to table. Um, it's not label, try. 
and washing machine. And there you have it. So we've got three ways of doing things. You can either directly build something and you know it looks fairly simple. You can scale a model yourself, just download an image and use the UV unwrap technique to just create it. Or if someone's already modeled the exact thing that you want, just download the model, bring it to Blender. If the scale is wrong, that's fine. Just downscale it in magnitudes of 10 and you know just place it wherever you want. Um, so I won't go through and sort of place all the furnitures because obviously you've got your own ideas of how you want things to look. I'll leave you to do that. It's a lot of information, so if anything gets confusing at any point, please leave it in the comments. But before we go, let's just build one final thing. Let's build um, the sort of platform for your end conditioning unit and the rail to hang, hang your clothes. Let's bring back the scene. And all I want is the layout. So wireframe mode, let's build this icon ledge and let's build this part here, which is um, the clothes rack. Icon ledge. Go back to the top view, we're in wireframe mode. This should be familiar territory by now. Shift right click, let's bring this here. Shift A, mesh, bring in a plane, label it AC ledge, Assassin's Creed. Scale it down. They've not really given the measurements for this, but that's completely fine because we've been working in scale the entire time. So let's just eyeball it. Let's bring it here. Great. Tab to edit mode, two to slightly edge. Let's move this edge all the way to the end over here. Control R or loop cut will create one over here. Select this edge. If you just try and move this edge alone, you'll see this part sort of gets stretched. So you don't want that. What you want is to extrude a new edge. So E to extrude, Y to lock it in the Y axis. And there you go. So if you go back to solid mode, you've got an icon ledge. And let's go back to edit mode 3 to select the faces, A to select everything. It's just a plane, so it's just a single sheet and then press E to extrude. Let's bring it up a bit and make it look a bit nicer. I to inset, let's bring it in a bit. If it starts looking a bit weird, like that part over there, remember you can just go back to object mode, control A, apply scale, go back to this. I to inset, it should be a bit more even now. Um, sort of make a little edge for this and then press E to extrude down. And look at that, you've created your little icon ledge. Let's bring it up a bit. There we go. And you know, you can use the same technique that we did earlier. You can put in a cube um, and make two air conditioning units here. Go look for an image of an air conditioning unit, put it there. You don't have to because why would you? Uh, but if you like the detail of that, go ahead and do it. So lastly, let's make this drying rack. Let's bring in a cylinder. So don't click anything yet, just follow what I'm doing. Select the cylinder here, but before you click anything, in the bottom left here, there's an option called Add Cylinder. Click that, and for the vertices, we're going to lower that down to about 12. We don't really need a lot of polygons when we're making something small like this, so 12 is probably sufficient. Let's go back to solid mode. Um, press the forward slash key to isolate this and let's press S to scale it down a bit. So let's continue scaling it but we don't want to change the height so S to scale, shift Z to lock in the Z axis and we'll just make it thinner. How's that look? That looks fine. Go to the front view. I apologize if this is a bit fast. Um, let me know if it is, but we've done stuff like this a few times before. So Shift D, duplicate. Let's bring in another one here. Shift D, duplicate. Move it on the X axis, put it in the middle. Let's rotate it on the Y axis by 90 degrees. Press S to scale it down. That's probably great. G and Z to move it up. Um, let's make this thinner without affecting the length. So we don't want to affect the X axis. So X to uh, S to scale, Shift X, and make it, how about that? That looks good, great. So with this selected, Shift D to duplicate, Z to move it down. And like the stairs in last week's episode, once you've done this, you can just press Shift R 
to redo the same command again and again. Great, so you've made your little clothes drying rack. Select everything, and like I mentioned before, is this, let's label this first. Uh, no, you know what, let's not label it first. Select everything, press Control J, and everything is one object. So there's two things that could have happened here. If you did everything, um, like you know, making the first, second, all these cylinders in edit mode, everything would be one object to begin with. If you did it in object mode, every time you add something new, it makes a new object. So if you did do it in object mode, then you know, select everything, Control J to join. If you did everything in edit mode, it's all one object anyway, so it doesn't matter. But let's, uh, it's just to inform you if you get confused about what's happening. So let's say close rack forward slash. Whoop. Make sure you're in the viewport forward slash. Let's rotate it in the y axis, but that that's wrong. Okay, so this is another peculiarity with peculiar. I can't speak English. Peculiarity with Blender. If you select an object, um, where does that go? You'll see a yellow dot here, right? And I'll, I'll bring in a new cube so this is a bit clearer. You see that? That is sort of the, think of it as the center of gravity of the object itself. And when you rotate and scale, it's always based on where that little orange cube is. Um, the thing is, if you move to edit mode and you start moving things around, your object moves, but that little orange circle doesn't. So if I rotate now, instead of rotating the cube itself, it rotates based on the axis of that little orange dot. And if you want to fix that, it's really easy. Select the object. You can either, you know, go to edit mode and try to bring it back to the middle or in object mode, select it, right click, set origin to the center of mass of the surface or the volume. There you go. So let's do that. Select this, right click, set origin, center of mass of the volume. Now if I rotate it by, haha, <laughs> it's the wrong axis. Rotate it in the x-axis by 90 degrees. There you go, rotate it in the z-axis by 90 degrees. We now have our clothes rack. Oh wow, that's tiny, that's fine. So scale it on the y-axis. Da -da -da -da. Solid view. Ooh, that looks weird, doesn't it? That's fine, okay, let's troubleshoot. So we'll scale it on the y-axis until it's long enough. Go back to object mode. So because in when we created this, we sort of duplicated things, right? We created this pole first, we duplicated it, we made this, then we made all this through duplicates. You can select it individually by just hovering over it and pressing, uh, yeah, and pressing L. So let's deselect everything, double tap A. So if I press L, I select just this. If I press L, it's just that. And then, oh, my mouse has stopped working. There we go. You can press L on each one of the little um, bars here as well. So what we want is, let's press L over this, L over this. And let's scale it down on the Y axis. Okay. Again, the orange dot comes into play here. If you try and scale it down, it's going to scale down over the middle here. But what we want is we want each one of these things to be scaled down on its own axis. So if you press the period, it's a shortcut, and then you select individual origins. Now when you select the y-axis, it goes down like that. Great. So it makes it a bit smaller. Let's make it a bit thicker. There we go. Deselect everything. Press L to select this. Move it to the side. There you go, you've got a clothes rack. Let's, since we've learned it, let's give it a material. Let's, do we have metal yet? We don't, so let's create a metal material. Metal, go to material preview to see what it looks like. Make it metallic, make it slightly shiny, and let's make it slightly darker. There you go. So, um, we've created furniture, we've created an aircon ledge, you can, you know, put your air conditioning units there as well. We've created your clothes hanging rack. Um, next week, we will try and add textures to the wall as well. So it's going to be things like wallpapers and uh, maybe lighting fixtures, that sort of thing. So thanks for your time and hope you enjoyed the episode. Bye. Sorry, a bit of uh, extra add-on now that I forgot. 
you might sometimes find that if you save your file, you go out of Blender and you come back in, everything's going to be pink because all the image and everything has gone missing. And it's because you need to relink everything. If you want to avoid this, you can just go down to File, External Data, make sure this is selected automatically back into Blend. So whenever you save your file, all these different external things that you're bringing in, like the images of the fridge and all that, gets packed into the Blend file as well. And when you open it, it should work like normal. That's about it. Thanks.